began the journey to the end of the Nightfall Saga with Night's End Part 1. This ish this episode, we are covering Batman issue 509 and Shadow of the Bat number 29. Batman 509 has a story by Doug Mensch, pencils by Mike Manley, inks by Dick Giordano, colors by Adrian Roy, lettering by Ken Brusniak, and is edited by Jordan B. Gorfinkel and the legendary Danny O'Neill. For Shadow of the Bat, Number 29 is written by Alan Grant with pencils by Brett Blevins, inks by Bob Smith and Brett Blevins, colors by Adrian Roy, and lettering by Todd Klein. We open with Lady Shiva challenging the Armless Master. Before the match, Shiva has the Armless Master call on his servant to witness the fight and then puts on a bat faced mask before the servant can see her face, at which point Shiva beats the Master and kills him. The story will, going forward, call this a Tengu mask, and um, that's. Not correct. We then shift to Bruce Wayne and see his training thus far. And Shiva approaches him for, or rather, Shiva makes contact, and we have their conversation regarding the uh, Bruce's need to train with her. And when Bruce admits that he refuses, still refuses to kill, Shiva gives Wayne the Bat Tengu mask and sends him to her address in Chinatown at a certain time. Before that appointment, we see the Armless Master's attendant informing his disciples that he was murdered by a man in a bat tengu mask. Go back to Jean Paul and see his ongoing breakdown. In Chinatown, Bruce, in the tengu mask, goes to the appointed place and time where he's challenged by the first of the Armless Master's disciples. They has fight, which Bruce barely wins. Bruce spares his opponent, which but brings him to Lady Shiva, where he objects to being set up like this and leaves the guy with Shiva, who proceeds to kill him. Bruce, you, you should have seen this coming when you left him unattended with Lady Shiva, who s set things in motion to try and get you to kill him. Elsewhere, Azrael is trying to investigate some gunrunners, but the visions of Saint Dumas are tormenting him, making this kind of tricky. Robin is keeping an eye on him, and he's befuddled by this. Now, these gunrunners in question have taken over Carlton Leha's operation, including his remaining stock, and they have his St. Dumas medallion. So, when Azriel finds the medallion when taking them down, he becomes convinced that Leha is still alive. Bruce fights, and again, barely defeats his second opponent, and when Bruce brings him to Shiva's, he he lets his opponent go when he sees the body of the first disciple. Again, Bruce, this is on you. In any case, the issue ends with Bruce atop a gargoyle, preparing to test himself by leaping to catch himself with a line from another gargoyle. And he's not ready, so he walks away. Now, some variation of this scene is going to come up in most subsequent issues until he makes the jump, so... I'm not necessarily going to describe it every time, but you can reasonably assume that this is happening. Our issue of Shadow of the Bat opens with Bruce training in the woods outside Gotham. He hears a falcon, which reminds him a little bit of Bird, one of the um, sidekicks of Bane, causing him to hide for a minute before he prepares for the oncoming attack from the next dis disciple who has a animal theme. In the Batcave, Jean-Paul's torment continues at the hands of the Spirit of St. Dumas, and Tim can't make heads or tails of Lehigh's medallion, so he uh, prints out a picture of it before going to a meeting with Bruce. At the meeting, Tim is surprised to be joined by Nightwing. Bruce gives a rundown what he and Oracle have managed to put together on the history of the Order of St. Dumas as a recap for those who have not read the Sword of Azrael miniseries. Since I don't know if it had been out in a trade at this point when the issue came out. Bruce also says he doesn't know the truth of what, or did know the truth of what Azrael was when he let him be Batman, which is kind of inaccurate. We saw the, what the programming could cause Jean Paul to become, but we also saw Jean Paul overcome the programming. So I would say more that it's a case of Bruce underestimated the programming for the system, but that's neither here nor there. In any case, Bruce is also genre savvy enough to know that because Carlton Leha's body wasn't found, he could honestly still be alive. So Jean-Paul couldn't be, or could be not totally off base 
when it comes to suspecting that Lee had restarted his arms smuggling operation. Azriel poses as a seller to try and get info on Lee Ha's location, and at the meet, the buyer insists that Lee Ha's out of commission before his goons jump Azriel. Azriel, once again, overpowers them all after they has fight. During this, we get an interlude of Robin and Nightwing intervening in a gang fight to showcase their teamwork and fighting styles in comparison with Azriel's. It has a real great Silver Age vibe here with a whole bunch of like, you, uh, you sit him up and I knock him down and a big thug just kind of goofy thumbs up and that sort of thing. The issue ends with Bruce fighting the next disciple, Manimal. Once again, Bruce wins in a close fight. This is a good start of the storyline, setting up the framework for Bruce's physical and psychological rehabilitation, along with setting a framework for a big he's back moment uh, in an issue to come. I also like the storyline with John Paul as well. It part works partially because the system is playing Helena's psyche, and partially because I like that both the readers and the characters, when they hear about, well, John Paul's semi psychosis regarding Carlton Leha, go, well, we haven't seen Leha's body. This is enough for it, Rodeo, especially Bruce. So there's a non zero possibility that he ain't dead. Even if it does turn out to be dead, it's a safe suspicion for the characters to have, given the circumstances and given, particularly again, for Bruce and Dick, their long and storied career as superheroes. My big complaint, honestly, with these two issues is the Tengu mask. My problem isn't that it's a bat motif. This is a Batman book. You do bat motifs for Bruce's rehabilitation for being Batman. The problem is that there are like at least three bat themed yokai that you probably could have worked better for this mask even if you're just saying oh it's even if you're like contriving because the face of this oni doesn't look like this but it still fits with the bat motif rather than calling it a tengu when tengu have more to do kind of with birds than bats honestly oh it's a good start to the storyline i'm looking forward to reading more of this Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 